Imagine being a president one day and an exile the next. Now imagine being that same exile, suddenly facing the possibility of being dragged back to your home country to face charges of plotting against the very nation you once led. Sounds like a political thriller, right? Well, buckle up, because this is the reality for Burkina Faso's former transitional president, Colonel Paul Henry Sandaogo Damiba. But before we get into the juicy details of this potential extradition, let's rewind a bit. How did Damiba rise to power in the first place? And what led to his dramatic fall? Cast your minds back to January 2022. Burkina Faso was struggling with a growing jihadist insurgency that had claimed thousands of lives and displaced millions. The country was in turmoil, with citizens increasingly frustrated by the government's inability to stem the tide of violence. Enter Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henri Sandaogo de Miba, a military man with a mission. On January 24, 2022, de Miba led a group of soldiers in a coup that ousted then-President Roch Caboret. The justification? a claim that the government had failed to address the mounting security crisis. Damiba's coup was seen by many as a necessary evil, our analyst explains. The people were desperate for change, for someone who could tackle the jihadist threat head on. Damiba, with his military background, seemed like the right man for the job. But here's a question for you viewers. Do you think that it is only a military president that could solve the jihadist threat in the Sahel? Or could a civilian president who is dedicated enough be a solution? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. So, Damiba took the reins of power. But what did he actually do during his brief tenure? Well, he made some bold promises. He vowed to restore security within two to three months and pledged to return the country to civilian rule within 21 months. These were ambitious goals, to say the least. But the numbers tell a grim story. Despite Damiba's military background and his promises, the security situation in Burkina Faso continued to deteriorate. Jihadist attacks increased, and more territory fell under militant control. In the first six months of Damiba's rule, over 530 security incidents were recorded, resulting in nearly 2,000 deaths. This was a significant increase from the same period in the previous year. But it wasn't just about security. Damiba's economic policies also came under scrutiny. Unlike his successor, there's no evidence that he made any significant changes to government salaries or implemented major economic reforms. The country continued to grapple with high inflation and rising living costs, further fueling public discontent. The Usted Junta leader, Damiba, was widely seen as too closely linked to France. When he was overthrown, there were protests outside the French embassy in Ouagadougou, and the French Institute in the city of Bobo de Olasso. The attack on both institutions came after the coup leader Ibrahim Traoré accused France of giving refuge to the deposed Damiba and planning to attack Burkina Faso. Damiba is believed to have taken refuge in the French base at Camboinsin in order to plan a counteroffensive to stir up trouble in our defense and security forces, said Traoré. The French embassy issued a statement firmly denying any involvement of the French army in the events. It also denied rumors that Burkinabe authorities have been hosted or are under the protection of French military. The coup came after several hundred people demonstrated in Ouagadougou to demand the departure of Damiba and the end of the French military presence in the Sahel. Before his overthrow, public frustration grew. Protests began to erupt in the capital, Ouagadougou, and other major cities. People who had initially welcomed Damiba's takeover were now questioning whether he was any better than his predecessor. And then, just eight months after seizing power, Damiba found himself on the receiving end of another coup. On September 30th, 2022, a group of junior officers led by Captain Ibrahim Traoré staged a takeover, citing Damiba's failure to improve the country's security situation. Before we continue, welcome to Pan-African Lens. If you're passionate about Africa's diverse cultures, rich history, development, and the contemporary issues shaping the continent and its diaspora, you've come to the right place. Be sure to subscribe and join the conversation as we explore these powerful stories together.
let's continue. Now let's talk about Ibrahim Traoré for a moment. At just 34 years old, he became the world's youngest head of state when he took power. But what sets him apart from Damiba? While both men came to power through coups, their approaches have been markedly different. Traoré has positioned himself as a man of the people, drawing comparisons to the revered Thomas Sankara, Burkina Faso's revolutionary leader of the 1980s. Traoré has made some bold moves. Reports suggest he slashed top government officials' salaries by 30% and increased civil servants' wages by 50%. Ibrahim Traoré has his hands on major economic sectors of Burkina Faso as he is in a hurry to develop the country. Now, let's fast forward to the present day and the bombshell that's rocking Burkina Faso. Damiba, who's been living in exile in neighboring Togo since his ousting, is now facing potential extradition back to Burkina Faso. Why? Because he's allegedly been caught red-handed plotting against the very country he once led. In a recent radio interview on October 5, 2024, Captain Traoré dropped this bombshell. For some time now, his proven involvement in these destabilization projects has become evident, especially the last project where he was linked to jihadists. Let that sink in for a moment. A former president, allegedly collaborating with jihadists to destabilize his own country. It's the kind of plot twist that would make even the most seasoned screenwriter blush. But here's where it gets complicated. Damiba is currently in Togo, and extraditing him isn't as simple as just asking nicely. Traoré explained that discussions are underway with the Togolese government, but it's a delicate diplomatic dance. We are handling the situation carefully, Traoré said, because in all honesty, we did not want to behave unpleasantly in the early stages with a former president. Whatever one may say, he is still a former president. This raises an interesting question. How should nations balance justice with diplomatic niceties when dealing with former leaders accused of serious crimes? Share your thoughts in the comments. Now let's dig a little deeper into Damiba's past and present. Before his brief stint as president, he was a decorated military officer with experience fighting jihadists. He even wrote a book titled West African Armies and Terrorism, Uncertain Responses, published in June 2021, just months before he seized power. Damiba's military career was impressive. He graduated from the Military Academy of Cadiogo and received training in France, including at the prestigious École de Guerre. He was known for his expertise in counterterrorism and had served in various military roles, including as a commander in the fight against jihadist groups. But somewhere along the line, something changed. What could drive a man who once fought against extremists to allegedly collaborate with them? Is it pure power hunger, or is there more to the story? Power can be a potent drug, our expert explains. Sometimes the desire to regain lost influence can drive people to make desperate choices. But we also have to consider the complex web of alliances and rivalries in the region. What looks like collaboration from one angle might be a different kind of strategy from another. It's crucial to understand that the situation in Burkina Faso doesn't exist in a vacuum. The entire Sahel region has been grappling with jihadist insurgencies, cross-border conflicts, and political instability. Countries like Mali, Niger, and Chad have all experienced coups or attempted coups in recent years. This regional context adds layers of complexity to Damiba's alleged actions. Are there broader geopolitical forces at play? Could external actors be involved in these destabilization projects Traoré mentioned? But let's not forget, these are still allegations at this point. Damiba hasn't had his day in court yet. That brings us to a crucial question. How can we ensure that any trial of Damiba would be based on facts and evidence, rather than political vendettas? The challenge here is twofold, our legal expert explains. First, there's the question of gathering credible evidence, especially if some of the alleged activities took place outside Burkina Faso. Second, there's the issue of public perception. Any trial would be highly politicized, and maintaining the appearance of fairness would be crucial. This is where international organizations like the African Union or ACOWAS might play a role. Could they provide neutral observers or even a venue for a trial? Or would their involvement be seen as unwelcome interference? 
As we wrap up this episode, let's take a moment to reflect on the broader implications of this unfolding drama. Burkina Faso has seen two coups in less than a year, and now a former leader stands accused of plotting against the state. This isn't just a Burkina Faso problem. Across West Africa, we've seen a resurgence of military takeovers, Mali, Guinea, and Chad. And many ask, what does this mean for democracy in the region? Or is democracy the cause of the problems? The root causes of these coups are complex, our expert explains. They often stem from a mix of security challenges, economic hardships, and public frustration with corrupt or ineffective governments. Breaking this cycle will require addressing these underlying issues, not just changing who sits in the presidential palace. As we wait to see how the Damiba extradition saga unfolds, we're left with more questions than answers. Will he be brought back to face charges? What evidence does the government have against him? And perhaps most importantly, how will this impact Burkina Faso's fight against extremism and its path towards stability? One thing's for sure. This story is far from over. The outcome could have far-reaching consequences, not just for Burkina Faso, but for the entire region. It could set precedents for how former leaders are held accountable, influence regional diplomatic relations, and potentially impact the ongoing fight against extremism in the Sahel. So, keep your eyes on Burkina Faso, because the next chapter in this political thriller could be just around the corner. And remember, in the complex world of African politics, today's allies can become tomorrow's adversaries, and vice versa. That's all for this episode of African Power Plays. If you found this video informative, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, in the world of African politics, the only constant is change. Until next time, keep questioning, keep learning, and keep engaging with the complex realities shaping our world. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and letting me break down these complex geopolitical topics. Let me know what you think about the issues down in the comments below. Looking forward to that discussion. Please like this video, share it, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you in our next video.